Hi, I'm Jay Benham, a museum educator at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and this video is part of your My Museum Classroom Kit. In this segment, we'll be looking at Lunar Landscape by Isamu Noguchi. As we look together, it will be helpful for you to have a paper and something to write with as you respond to the prompts in this video. Please pause the video and get those things now if you need to. This video so much has so much fun information and activities, so feel free to pause the video or rewind the video at any time uh, that you may need to. Before we get started discussing this work of art, let's take a few moments to let your eyes wander all over and gather some useful details. Noguchi, as an adult and established artist, architect, landscaper, and furniture designer, placed himself in a World War II Japanese internment camp in 1942. He was not required to stay in the camp, but he elected to place himself there to teach other Japanese American citizens how to make art. He spent many, many months in the Arizona internment camp living, teaching, and working with his fellow brethren. Now you might ask yourself, uh, what is a Japanese internment camp? Well, after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, the United States declared war on Japan and entered World War II. Not long after the attack, President Roosevelt signed an executive order that allowed the military to force people of Japanese ancestry into internment camps. Around 120,000 Japanese American citizens were sent to the camps. People were forced into an area by surrounded by barbed wire and entire families would occupy a single space. People could not leave. Internment camps were prisons for these citizens. So again, put your eyes on the lunar landscape. Let your eyes explore for a little bit. I've got a couple of questions for you. Do you think Mr. Noguchi's experience in the internment camp in Poston, Arizona is reflected in his artwork entitled Lunar Landscape? Go ahead and take your pencil and paper and write down a few words or expressions or a sentence even or two. Do you think Mr. Noguchi's experience in the internment camp in Poston, Arizona is reflected in this artwork entitled Lunar Landscape? You can write your response now. Here's another question. How would you explain or interpret his, this artwork in relation to his life experience in the Japanese internment camp? It's a very similar question, isn't it? So how would you explain or how would you interpret this artwork in relation to his life experience in the Japanese internment camp? So take a moment or two and write a few phrases or a word or two down about that. This sculpture, called Lunar Landscape, which is lit from within, was made by Mr. Noguchi. Look how the lunar landscape glows with the reflection of light from a hidden space. Mr. Noguchi used a complex arrangement of color acetate filters and concealed light bulbs to create this effect. Cork spheres on fishing lines seem to hang in orbit like satellites or planets. Mr. Noguchi was not required to be in the Arizona retirement camp. He chose to go there in hopes of improving the appalling living conditions. Instead, he found himself a prisoner there. Why would a person place himself in a prison-like place surrounded with armed guards with machine guns and barbed wire? Well, he wanted to teach his fellow Japanese Americans how to make art. He spent many months in the Arizona internment camp living, teaching, and working with the people there. He gave up earning a living by making art to give back, to teach and share 
in his knowledge to his fellow Japanese Americans so they could have a better life while being in prison and give them hope for a future when they could return to their homes. Now that we have visually gotten to know his artwork, let's talk about what inspired Noguchi to create it. Noguchi was born in Los Angeles, California, to a Japanese poet and an American, white American writer. He spent most of his uh, childhood in Japan and returned to the United States at the age of 14. Noguchi tried very hard to fit into white American culture, but he faced many problems due to his father's heritage. Have you ever been treated badly because of where you are from, the way you look, or how you talk? When you are treated unfairly because of the color of your skin or how you look, it's called racism. When someone is treated unfairly because of their culture, identity, religion, or nationality, it is called bigotry. Racism and bigotry are reactions of fear that come from not understanding people who are different from others. These ideas of racism and bigotry caused Noguchi a lot of emotional pain, not only for himself, but how other Japanese Americans were treated. He used his stories and feelings as inspiration for creating art, which can be a great way to express ideas and emotions. Much of his artwork is inspired by his personal stories and how he felt, how he felt as a Japanese American during a difficult time in American history. Even though Noguchi's artwork was inspired by his own feelings and expressions, he wanted to show the struggles and feelings of others so that people could learn how to build empathy. And empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person or a group of people. It's like putting yourself in another person's situation and really feeling as if you are the other person. Empathy is slightly different from sympathy because sympathy is the ability to recognize another person's emotions, not actually feeling them. We really hope you enjoyed exploring Isamu Noguchi's artwork, Lunar Landscape. Okay, now I'd like to introduce our community artist, Tram Colvin. Hi, Tram. Hi. Listen, we're so excited to have you with us today. Uh, Tram is going to be doing our art, art activity, and we're going to be talking about that here in just a few moments. But I wanted to ask um, Tram, how did you get interested in art? So I have been interested in art for as long as I can remember, even early as the age of four. Um, I remember my mom always kind of drawing little flowers and sketching on receipts and notebooks. And so I always loved watching that. And I also have uh, one of my older sister, um, she was an artist and she would draw. And so I wanted to be like her. So anytime there was an art class, um, I was always in it because um, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, so that's how I got really interested in art. Are you saying art class? Is that like high school or elementary school? What about college? Um, so, yes. Yeah, so um, I took cl art classes all the way up through high school and then realized that I really wanted a career in art. So whenever I made the decision to go to college, I decided to uh, get my fine arts degree um, in, in art. Well, that's really interesting because now uh, you are in your career in, in art and we, we could actually call you a, a probably a professional artist when you say that. Yeah, I definitely would say that I'm a professional artist. I, uh, after college, I took a few different jobs and also taught at a painting studio. Um, but I knew that I wanted to really create my own artwork and to create a career out of it. And so I created Tram Colwyn Art, which is my business. Um, and so now I am doing that full time uh, and it's been over two years. Well, that's great. I think that's uh, tremendous that you could really be doing something that you're trained for and that and apparently that you really love. But I have a question, too. Um, what pleases you about, uh, about your work? What is the most thing that pleases you most about your work that you, you do? So if you are looking at my art, you'll see that um, the common theme is nature. And so it's whether it's florals or landscape, um, that's because 
I find a lot of joy in nature and it what keeps me grounded. Um, and so whenever I create, those, that's my main theme. But also beyond the creating of nature and, and what I enjoy, um, my hope is always that whenever people look at my art, they see the beauty in it. But beyond the beauty of um, what's on the painting, I want them to know that it's a reflection of the world that we actually have out there. Um, there, there is beauty in the world and it is meant to be enjoyed. And so um, that's kind of what I hope. It's not a um, obvious message in my paintings, but I think that my desire is always for people to um, look and reflect and then see that, hey, this is something that's actually out there in our world that I can enjoy myself. You know, that's that so much reminds me of our artist we just talked about, Noguchi. He, he took the beauty that he had in art and he was trained like you. He was an artist and he was successful in his community, but he took his art art making activities and took them into the Japanese internment camp, bringing that beauty into the camp so that the people that were interned there um, could experience that joy and that beauty from his teaching. Um, and I can see that you you can kind of re relate to that. Um, do you have any other stories that relates to Noguchi uh, giving of himself? Yeah, so I, connect with Noguchi and the fact that I am an immigrant myself. I was born in uh, Vietnam and immigrated to America in 1996. So I was six years old at the time. And so growing up, um, I was raised in a traditional Vietnamese home, but all of my education and my social interaction have been around um, American friends. And so I have in a way, two different perspective of, of the world of both um, my traditional upraising as well as uh, an American. And so um, it's really fun for me to explore that side of me and to uh, use that in my art um, to give back to other people. And so not only with my art that I hope to bring joy, but I also like to use my art to contribute to our community and the community that has raised me. So for example, um, once I have created a piece of artwork, I also use it to help fundraise for families adopting and even a local uh, nonprofit here in my community that serves uh, immigrants and um, refugees, which is really close to my heart. That's fascinating because there's there's two things I want to bring out in just what you said. Um, myself, I'm 50% Native American. I'm a member of the Kiowa tribe of Oklahoma. So I come from two cultures. Um, like yourself, you experienced two cultures. Noguchi experienced two cultures. That's not uncommon. It's very, very common. And uh, I think that brings a lot of insight to our community and to our relationships with other people. The second thing you said is that Noguchi, um, was it that he brought um, some joy to people? Uh, is that what you said? Yeah. So, yeah. so he, he did that through his art, through his art. And I'm so excited about what you're going to do for us today. What material are you going to use with us today? So I'm going to be showing um, everyone how to use watercolor pencils as well as just watercolor itself. Um, but the goal of my activity is so that um, while you're learning all of these fun watercolor techniques um, is to reflect of um, the beauty that you have within yourself and the joy that you have within yourself and how you can give back to others using that. Um, I don't think that you have to be an artist to contribute and to serve others, um, but as we're creating these activities, um, those are the things that I hope to um, emphasize is to uh, help you see what you can do in order to um, bring joy to yourself and to bring joy to other people. Well, listen, I'm so excited to, to get into these activities and um, let's kind of kind of get into that because I'm really anxious to, to see what our students come up with, uh, something from their heart, from their mind, right onto the page with, with the watercolor. So this is going to be a, a really exciting, fun activity. So let's get into it, okay? All right, I'm excited. Good, good deal. Thank you for watching. Now, please feel free to go to the art making video that is related to Osama Noguchi 
Remember to keep in mind what you have learned here as you have fun making some interesting and wonderful art.